Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller, the podcast. I'm joined by Seth. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for finding us on, uh, on, the, on the internet. Now, these shows originally aired on Brookings Radio, but now they're all here for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. There you go. Sit back, enjoy the show, relax. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything on future shows. As we said, the, this comes out live in the Brookings area, but enjoy this archive episode. Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. This is Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Time at the lake, camping out, mowing the lawn. Their beer's just right for all these occasions, and we're talking about some favorites. Summer beers this week on Beer Untapped. I love the light, crisp, wonderful to drink lagers or the floral aromas for IPA. I, I think to say any certain beer is only drinkable in the summer is a bit of a travesty. I, I think there's any time of the year you can have, you can have a beer and enjoy it. Um, but when the weather does warm up, it encourages you. To maybe have one or two beers as opposed to the just one in the winter. Seth Cook there, head brewer at Wooden Legs Brewing in Brookings. He says summer beer favorites tend to be easy to drink. And that usually lends itself to a lighter beer, not only in color, but usually in alcohol, uh, usually in flavors, uh, more social or session beer. So that's what I think of summer beers, is I think of lake beers, things that go really well with a campfire, that go really well watching the boats go by, um, go really well after finishing the lawn. Those are summer beers in my mind. He says they have beers great for summer drinking, including one designed with just that in mind. The Cool Blonde is, we often call that our lake beer here. So if you're heading to the lake, grab the Cool Blonde. It's got a little bit of ginger, a little bit of coriander in it. It's a, it's basically an English-style blonde ale um, that we've interpreted, of course, just a little bit like we do of all of our beers. Really enjoy that beer. Easy to drink. It's it's. It's definitely not a light beer by any sense in, in, in means of character or flavors, but definitely in complexion. It, it, it's not big and dark, um, but it is wonderfully tasteful. Summer beers also go well with the foods of summer. We start talking beer pairings. Usually in the summer, people start eating uh, lighter salads. Uh, you start getting into fish on the grill. You know, you'll still eat the big chops and stuff, but you usually stay away from the really big starchy heavy meals. If you, if you look at what pairs well with, with salmon and walleye, you're going to get into the light beers. Uh, you're going to get into the beers with coriander and ginger and lemon and, uh, you know, those types of floral, even floral hops. So those go really well with, with stuff you're pulling off the grill. When this look at summer beers continues, we'll get specific and find out the summer favorites of some of our regulars and a few special guests as well. That's coming right up on Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Hot town, summer in the city, back of my neck getting dirty and gritty. Bend down, isn't it a pity? Welcome back to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller as we talk summer beers, shandies, session IPAs, Hefeweizens, lagers, Belgian whites, maybe a pale ale or even a Saison. What are your summer favorites? Yeah, let's find out. Here's brewer Chris Harding, Drew Eklund from the liquor store, beer blogger Dale Miskimmons, and certified Cicerone Angela Yaney. I am a complete sucker for summer shandy. There's no two ways about it. I think it's a really good beer. Um, I don't understand why it gets flack. I think it's a really good beer, genuinely. I don't know. Summer beers are kind of the same as all year round beers for me. I, I, you know, just like a light lager or something, ice cold. Currently, I think my favorite summer beer is Sierra Nevada's Nooner. It's slightly hoppy. It's got a bit of a lemony flavor to it, but it's not overpowering like a, like a summer shandy. Some session ales. They're a little bit lighter, and yet they still have a good hop character. So the Founders All Day IPA is a great one. I like uh, some of the good craft lager beers. Shell's Pilsner is a good beer. Fresh squeeze from Deschutes is fantastic. I told myself I would never be an IPA drinker, and then... It kind of started with this slope after Fresh Squeeze. Now I've just been craving summer citrusy IPAs on a hot day. How about some more? Here's Brant Mathiason and Joe Romsdell from Wooden Legs, Mr. Quinn and Seth with their summer faves. Well, I really like a good cool blonde, of course. That's nice and refreshing. And some other good light, crisp Loggers are always good. Wooden Legs, I'm drinking the Summer Shandy, or the Pub Shandy, I should say. Other than that, I'm drinking a lot of the Nooner, uh, Nooner Pilsner from Sierra Nevada. Very good. Easy drinking. I can drink about six or ten at a time. Ooh, there'd be quite a few, but I think one that stands out would be the Blue Moon White IPA. Oh, man, that is awesome. Just an absolutely refreshing cold great beer not heavy but a great zing a nice zest to it i like the cool blonde i like some of the lower alcohol 
IPAs, you know, the or or American Pale Ales. I'll drink a lot of our Split Rock Creek. I still really enjoy that. We have our farmhouse coming out very very shortly. That's one of my favorites. And how about me? You want to know, right? I've been into Hefeweizens since for some reason this summer, and especially shells. What a tasty, yummy summer beer. A great summer event coming up in Brookings. Actually, it's a series of events. Seth Cook tells us about the new Brookings Music Series, Downtown at Sundown. Really happy to be part of it. We're not certainly not the only business uh, that is that has helped put this on. We've got the Old Market, the Ram, uh, Cubbies, Whiskey Creek is putting it on. You know, we've had big name sponsors like First Bank and Trust. These guys have, have really kind of reached out and, and said they want this to be successful. So it started as an idea with the CVB, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Downtown Brookings, Inc. They brought a consultant in. They brought, uh, you know, they brought some funds together to put this series on. It begins July 16th right in front of the pub there on 5th Street, and there is no admission charge. Some beers makes me feel fine. Drinking all the shandies I can find. Finally today, Drew Eklund, our beer guide at Brookings Liquor Store, says their new line growler station is up and running it is we're selling our growlers for uh eight dollars a piece for the uh, 64 ounce growlers we're selling uh our beer for uh 20 to 30 cents per ounce so i can tell you what we have on tap take 16's hayloft heffy hydra's death's breath double ipa empyrean's lemon bison um, new belgium's oatmeal ipa Fernson's uh, out of Sioux Falls, their farmhouse ale, and uh, two from Bank, um, their Sour Bomb and Top Lab Blue. You can also bring in your own growler for a fill. A 64 ounce will run about 16 bucks on most beers. That's it for this week's edition of Beer on Tap with Perry Miller. Next week, Dale Miskimmons and the beer blog Sodak Beer. Until then, drink local and drink responsibly. Thank you for listening to this archived edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Feel free to listen to other episodes. And if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on a future show, please let us know. Thanks again.